By now, you're probably aware that the stock market and other markets around the world are often dictated to by the Federal Reserve. With talk of tapering on the horizon as early as September, will this bring in the monthly historical average of September being a very bad month? Let's take a look at this and some more information that's going to be relevant to you in the markets over the next 24 hours. Stay tuned, guys. Okay, well, as we like to do together, let's take a look at the heat map here for the S&P 500 over the last 24 hours. And this is for the close of the 16th of August, 2021. And on the surface, you might be literally looking at this thinking, oh, well, not a big deal. Nothing much happened. Actually, there was a big movement. We saw a bit of a flash movement in the morning to the crash side and then a big pickup into the end of the day. Stocks like Tesla, AMD and other really big favorites, I guess, from the retail community certainly weren't doing so well. And it was a tale, I guess, of multiple different markets, some hyper stocks, biotechs, etc., not doing well, while the Dow Jones, S&P 500, and NASDAQ really did recover quite a lot from being down as much as over 1% early. IWM, Russell 2000, smaller cap companies did not fare very well. And this is, I think, a mixture of increased volatility, the US 10-year yield going down, and that really hitting a lot of the smaller regional banks that make up that Russell 2000. When we take a look at the sectors, healthcare, utilities, consumer staples, all incredibly defensive sectors. Now, when we have utilities moving up and above, we've always talked about the money rotation occurring, and this could be what creates the flashpoint in the next couple of weeks towards that bearish side. This is truly a fight between the bulls and the bears right at the tippity top of this market right now. How are we going to find out where they're going? Well, we can use stats and some other things to really figure out some of those reasons and where their next steps are. What's the important point? We'll talk about that in just a few moments. We've got August, September. Obviously, we know these are usually bad months, mostly September. I mean, for the market, I've been bringing this up a lot. And for any new viewers out there, also, here's 20 years of NASDAQ results. You'll notice August, September, specifically September, is a bit of weakness. I usually go a little bit neutral during August, September, unless the price action is telling me to go another way. And that's just because historically, I know it doesn't perform better than, let's say, some other the markets out there over this period. Let's get into the technical analysis though. We'll start here with the dollar index as all money flows through the dollar index in the US stock market, obviously one of the best markets to trade in the world. And you'll take a look here and notice that it's slowly moving up here, kind of saying risk off uh, to a degree. I think that the dollar index can certainly move back up into these two points here, either the 92.80 or around that 92.70. And it should find some selling pressure either here or here. If you're a day trader, you'd be looking for lightning bolts, swing trades off these levels, and of course, a little bit of weakness, and then looking to sell it back down to this zone. At this stage, it still does look weak on the larger timeframes, and always go out to something like the weekly to get a bit of an idea. See this big rejection? You can't ignore that off that resistance just yet. The only time that you'd be like, oh yeah, I'm a massive dollar bull, is if it ever closes above this zone. Oh, that will be a big deal and we'll be covering it on this channel. So remember, subscribe and hit that like button if you enjoy our videos. So what happened yesterday in the markets or what happened on the 16th of August? A massive, massive V-shaped reversal. Now, if we're having a look at the markets overall and you just click on this daily, you can see how big a rejection this looks. And for many people, they'll be thinking, oh, well, it's just another buy the dip scenario. How good was that? Amazing gains. Yes, it really does look like it's super strong, but the good thing is for many traders is this is put in a line between the bulls and the bears. We now know that if we get a closure underneath this zone, we'll be taking out many people's stop losses. We'll be getting through the 20 moving average, which we've tested now one, two, three, four, five times in as little as many weeks. And that's not usually a great sign. And if we do find this weakness, it's going to be on for the bears. The bears will quickly try to push this down to the 50 exponential moving average and possibly even further after that with the seasonal. So underneath here, which is the 14.9 kind of 40 zone, a closure point will be important. I guess this really shows everybody the importance of waiting for the close when you're trying to pick a bear signal. Picking a bear, picking a bear signal, incredibly tough. We also have our line in the sand towards the bull side, 
We know that if the market closed above here on the NASDAQ, it should move further and higher. And of course, we'll be talking about those levels in just a few moments. With that big move yesterday in the NASDAQ in other pairs, we saw, of course, a spike up here in the VIX. And you'll notice the closure point and where it got to. If we move over to a candle chart, you'll see the VIX did spike and then it came straight back down. This could have been off the Afghanistan news. It could be off a whole bunch of geopolitical information that's coming out. But realistically, whenever it's down around this 15 and a half, 15 zone at this stage, we have seen increased spikes in volatility off this point. So just continue to watch the market and be very cautious around this point. We've also got TLT, which is the 20 year bonds rising up here. You'll notice it has that weekly pin bar or hammer as many people will call it. And we've seen a movement into the bottom end or the top end of our overall trend line. So our trend line was a beautiful buy pressure, then it gapped underneath, closed below showing weakness. We moved down for a few days, showed bullish movement, and now we're, of course, grappling with this area. We expect the bears to come back in at this 150 zone. They've sold it off. And then, of course, we ever close above this again while we continue to go up on TLT. So continue to watch that space. It will be an interesting level. 10-year continues to be weak as well. If this, The more this weakens, the more the 10-year goes down, usually the more pressure that puts on things like the Russell 2000, as there's a lot of banks in there. The Dow as well can get pressured by the US 10-year coming down. And we also have usually the 20-year bonds moving up. So remember, it's, it's important to understand all of the ways that these markets move together. If, if the US 10-year goes down, bonds will traditionally go up. You'll also see movements through certain indices or certain sectors um, that are a lot more aggressive due to that movement. Now, back into the stocks. Let's get into Tesla. Ooh, not a good close, guys. Now, I'm aware that on Thursday, I believe in the US, we have Battery Day or AI Day, sorry, AI Day. And that is going to be potentially a catalyst towards the bull side. But this is a very bearish looking candle. We've closed out of the range. We actually didn't really pick up anywhere near as much as the rest of the market did. And this could be off the NEO news. Um, there were some problems with the crash, I believe, that unfortunately killed somebody. And that may be just FUD information in the long term, but it did break it through here. Now, when it broke through here, you expect the market to try to come back up and retest this 697 from the bottom up. At this point, there will be bears trying to get back in control. If you're a day trader, this is the zone that you look for change of market action. So you're basically looking for little lightning bolts. You're looking for um, aggressive kind of selling here to occur. And if it does, then of course you then get into it towards the sell side. You're looking at about 660 in terms of the next level of major support here for Tesla. Unfortunately, closed below. There's no way you can really look at this that bullishly from that aspect. And if it does rally, be careful of the 697, 700 zone. Uh, that's what I'll be looking at very closely. Now, speaking of rallies, we had Apple breaking through the 150 barrier yesterday. A lot of calls expired last week. There's still, I think, about a five to one call ratio, call to put ratio on Apple. It closed at 151. It's continued to bounce off the 20 exponential moving average on the daily. When the bears get control, if they do, They'll be pushing it underneath the 20. That will be your kind of signal that things are not looking good for Apple. But at this stage, we are closed above. Now, if you're just using the price action, you would think this is a pretty bullish kind of thing. You would basically then take the distance of this range. You would extrapolate that out and hope it kind of hits a level that makes sense. In this case, it hits around a 158. And uh, if that's your target, 158, 160, we've got that longer term target here. There's no reason to be scared of Apple now at, at this stage. It's still finding a series of you know, new highs. It's still clawing onto that 20 moving average. And this is what I say about putting your opinions at the door. While I might be semi-neutralized at this time of year, traditionally in the NASDAQ kind of plays, I'm still going to take day trades and still going to take directional trades if the price action is telling you to do so. Um, do I like this? Well, it, it has me nervous, there's no doubt. But at this stage, I mean, this is what it's telling you. It's it's showing you an aggressive kind of closure above here. It is what it is. We follow the trend. And that's the beautiful thing about price action. It shows you the way and you can put you know all of your information aside and see whether it makes sense to it. And if it does make sense to the price action, then you can be more confident in it. If it doesn't make sense, then you might want to take like a slightly smaller order size. You know, it's up to you. You have the flexibility. That's the beautiful 
effectiveness of trading really all right we'll move over to the qqq now and we've got some pretty good readings here on the qqq recently we've had uh, two real trend lines that we've been using we've got this trend line here through the last two peaks and then we've got the most recent trend line through this peak this peak and this peak if we get that closure above the 370 we go towards this trend line i believe and then if we get through that the next one and you can see it's still trapped in a pretty decent range Anything, any close under 364 um, with a daily close, I think is an incredibly significant bearish sign. And we move towards that 50 exponential, as we said before. So yeah, this, this is really the chart to be watching this week, at least how I'm seeing it. S&P 500 continues to grind higher. We've got two trend lines going on here as well. You can see that we've got that 4,500, 4,520 if we continue in the trajectory we are right now. Big rally off the kind of more conservative pullback yesterday in the trade. And um, yeah, really nice level, really nice momentum flow going on here from the S&P 500. Look at the four hour, little bullish hammer, then some follow through. There was some okay day trading yesterday if you were prepared to take that 20 moving average on the four hour, which has been met by buying pressure quite a few times through these rallies. You know, here's the, here's the rallies, here's the pickups. And uh, you can see it did it again. So that was very, very nice there. Congratulations to people in it. Now, I wanted to get into the utilities because when we see utilities running out of control, consumer staples running out of control and really beating the market, it shows that Wall Street is rotating from the growth side of things, which is, of course, the first initial stage of a market recovery, the, discre the consumer discretionary side of things, which is, again, also the first stage of recovery, and it's starting to move into a later cycle. Now, I don't believe we're in a later cycle of this new bull run that's happened since the pandemic. I think that we're just seeing a rotation from basically a risk on to a slightly risk off as Wall Street prepares for whatever comes next, whether that be a small correction play or just even a very small dip over the September to December period. I'd be very surprised not to see some form of dip that's going to be over 5 to 8% during that period of the later half of this year. Why? Uh, because two steps forward, one step back is very common in these markets. And you notice here that the utilities are starting to perform very well. In fact, it's, it's really outperforming the rest of the market at this stage, and we're getting close to the top. So imagine if it blasts through this level here, and we've still got a market that's basically sitting neutralized or flat. If that occurs, you know something's going on and it's only a matter of time before Wall Street attack with the big bears and start punishing the retail herd. Let's move over to Bitcoin. This is also a very interesting market. We're seeing a lot of strange daily closes here. We've got a rejection candle, a rejection candle, a follow through to the 48,000 level, then a weakness that's come through. Notice the bullish hammer here or the pin bar. We close underneath that level. It opens the floodgates towards selling side. And I'm thinking that 42 and a half could be open again. 42 and a half thousand is kind of the aim there, I feel, uh, for reloaders in the Bitcoin movement. And yeah, it's all about that zone. I feel like these moving averages, we've got to close underneath the 200 and you've also got to close underneath this wick because that's going to take out a lot of stop losses and push it down. Uh, over here on Ethereum, it's a very similar kind of scenario. Notice how it's bounced right off that key support. Close underneath there, take out the stop losses for all these buyers, probably on leverage at this stage, and the market does its normal thing. It's got its beautiful steps forward, gets its little step back to, to reload, and then moves through. For the big bulls, you know what you need. New highs on both Bitcoin and Ethereum, and a lot of the market money is now flowing into the alts. We saw the Cardano move. We obviously saw the XRP move for, you know, the Ripple move for, you know, a couple of seconds there. And some of the other big alts have started to also uh, be kind of the place to be for cash at this stage. Um, we look for Bitcoin to find a little bit of weakness here, hopefully, and then move around to being very strong. And I've already started seeing it, guys. People are calling 500,000 again. People are calling 100,000 again. So in the comments down below, let me know what your 12-month outlook is for Bitcoin. Is it 100,000? Is it 200,000? Is it a million dollars? Unlikely, by the way. Uh, you let me know in the comments down below. I'd be interested to see what the community thinks. Um, other things that are going on right now, as I said, within the next 24 hours, we may find out whether the market wants to go bearish or bullish. We've got core retail sales here coming out at 8.30 a.m. ET time. So that's New York time. 
And then we've also got Fed Chair Powell speaking later on in the day, 1.30 p.m. ET, so New York time again. These two catalysts, well, specifically maybe the core retail sales coming into, of course, Papa Powell and his generalized, I guess you would say, not negativity on the market, but the market never seems to like what he says that much, um, could be that bearish catalyst that pushes it round, pushes it back down with all the other geopolitical issues going on right now. And again, if it gets through that support, those weak rejections, I think it's a big deal. Um, and I definitely think it's worthwhile paying attention to in your analysis. Should we be scared? Um, I don't think you should ever really be scared of the markets. You're always going to be, have to be an optimist whenever possible. Optimism pays. And as we know, the rule is there's more money that's been lost on the sidelines than actually being lost in the bear busts. So it's all about being optimistic, but at the same time, you know, playing your cards close to your chest and understanding the market dynamics. And at this stage, there's probably more negatives than there is positives towards the market, but the price action is still the biggest one, and that's still going positive right now. Thanks very much. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe, hit that like button or smash it up, and we'll see you one hour before the New York Open live stream here on the FX Evolution channel. Thanks very much, guys. Bye for now.